In this video, I'm going to explain why the Sony A1 OLED television can look brighter in HDR mode even though its peak brightness measurement has been rated lower by many publications than LG's 2017 OLED TVs and why this is not always a good thing. Coming right up! Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Teo and I'm a professional TV reviewer and calibrator. In this channel, we do scientific TV reviews video interviews, settings tips and tricks, and also the odd unboxing video. So if you are not a subscriber yet, I would strongly urge you to click the subscribe button below for future useful videos like this. Right, the Sony A1 and the LG C7 OLED television has been reviewed by several publications, and the peak brightness measurement has been generally thought to be higher on the LG C7 OLED, and the Sony Bravel will have a lower peak brightness. But in general viewing on 4K Blu-ray or any HDR10 content, the Sony Bravia has generally been thought to be able to deliver brighter specular highlight, a brighter picture, despite its lower peak brightness measurement. And many people jump to the conclusion that this is a sign that the measurements that we are doing are just not reflective of real world viewing. And that's partly true, but there's another very, very important point and I'm going to explain it. The reason why you are seeing this discrepancy between the objective measurements and real life viewing is because of tone mapping and I'm going to explain what tone mapping is today and demonstrate the different tone mapping algorithms while I actually have three of the top OLED televisions here in this test room today. I'm taking this opportunity to make this video because I managed to actually get these three screens here fortuitously with different tone mapping algorithm. So this is the Sony A1 OLED 65 inches and this is the LG C7 OLED which is a 2017 model 55 inches and this is Panasonic's new EZ1 2002 OLED television which is 65 inches in screen size. Now I've started a loop of a 4K Blu-ray of Batman vs Superman which is I'll show you that it is actually in HDR mode if I can actually find my remote. So if I actually press the long press the info button which is fed from an Oppo 203 Blu-ray player 4K Blu-ray player you can see that it is actually outputting in 4K 24 Hertz and BT2020 colors and 12-bit YCBCR422. This is a proper 4K, 4K source that has been sent to all three screens side by side and I'll show you that each display is actually doing its job in terms of kicking into the correct HDR mode. So with the Sony, right, that it is actually in HDR and with the LG Right, HDR cinema user mode and with the Panasonic EZ1000 and we can just uh, so viewing mode HDR through cinema okay so all three is displaying HDR10 content from a 4k blu-ray played through an Oppo 203 Ultra HD blu-ray player which is then split by an HD based T matrix to all three screens for side by side comparison. Now, before I proceed, I think it's probably best to first give a disclaimer as to why you are seeing this video as it is. Now, if you think that the HDR images are looking a bit dark, that is because I have to actually decrease the exposure of the camera so that you can actually see the highlight detail, which I'm going to demonstrate later. Also, if you hear a slight hum in the background, that is coming from the fan of this HD Base T distributor that I'm actually using to power this demonstration. And also, in terms of the settings of the television, all three has been calibrated for HDR10, but certain settings are actually not optimized because I wanted to demonstrate certain aspects of the different tone mapping algorithm to drive home the point about this demonstration. So let's explain what tone mapping actually is. It is a very, very confusing matter, but content on Ultra HD Blu-rays are mastered to either 1000 nits of peak luminance or 4000 nits of peak luminance, generally speaking. And, but these displays, these OLED displays, are only capable of maximum, probably around 800 nits of peak brightness. So 
In terms of trying to get the detail that is present as let's say the region between 800 to 1000 nits or even detail that is present between 800 and 4000 nits that is actually in the source itself to get the detail into the picture the TV has to perform tone mapping now let me explain a few terms here and there the first term that I want to actually introduce is average picture level or APL APL is the general brightness level of the scene within the source signal. So if you have a white screen, let's say an Apple advert or a Sky TV advert that is entirely white, that is said to have a very, very high APL. Uh, if you have, let's say, a snow scene, let's say some in Planet Earth 2 or in the snowboarding movie called The Art of Flight, that has a high APL. Dark scenes generally have low APL. Next term I want to actually clarify is peak brightness or peak luminance. Now, peak brightness or peak luminance dictates the brightest a uh, display can get. Usually in our objective measurement, we measure this peak brightness on a 10% window, which is actually part of the criteria specified by the UHD Alliance for Ultra HD Premium Certification. But in terms of peak brightness, we measure it on a 10% window and also we try to get it as close to the industrial standard white point of D65 as possible because a bluer white point, let's say D75 or D93, they can, they can actually get a higher peak brightness out of it but obviously the whole picture will look lousy, it will look overly blue, it won't be accurate to the filmmaker's intention but you can get a higher peak brightness which is why on the dynamic or vivid mode of, the, of these sets you can actually get a higher peak brightness, maybe even approaching a thousand nits. I haven't actually encountered the situation, but it, is, it may be possible for you to get a thousand nits out of these uh, OLED televisions. But once calibrated, I've never encountered uh, an OLED television that can actually deliver higher than 800 nits when measured on a 10% window. So that is the APL, the average brightness of the scene, and peak brightness how bright a specific point of the TV is actually outputting. So as you can imagine, you can actually have a reasonably low APL but with a high peak brightness. Let's say a space scene where there's only one sun uh, or a star shining brightly here. So the whole scene will have a reasonably low APL but a high peak brightness. The next concept that I want to actually clarify is that some people think that their TV is bright enough and they don't need higher brightness for displaying HDR content. That is incorrect because what we are trying to get from a higher peak brightness is not actually the brightness itself, it's the detail. Let's say you have a specific area of the cloud here that is coded at um, say 2000 nits. If your display is only capable of 800 nits, and the TV doesn't perform any tone mapping, the detail would just get discarded. You wouldn't even see the cloud at all. It would just get wiped out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in a test pattern through the Oppo 203 4K Blu-ray player. Okay, so this is a test pattern that consists of various columns that are made up of different need levels, ranging from 100 here, to 1000 here. So if a display is doing its tone mapping correctly, then it will be able to delineate every single luminance level correctly, like what the LG and the Panasonic is actually doing. However, if you look at this Sony A1 OLED, which I must stress, the settings that I've used here is not the correct one, you know, just because I want to do this demonstration. If you set it to the Cinema Pro preset, what the TV will be doing is to clip the detail above 800 nits, which is uh, its native peak brightness level. So the detail between 1000 nits, 900 nits and also 800 nits is, uh, is, is invisible. So you can't actually see any difference there at all. It is just being rendered as a pure white. The challenge with tone mapping, especially on a low brightness display, is the balance between detail and brightness. So if you want more brightness, you'll have to sacrifice detail. But if you want more detail, you have to sacrifice brightness, like uh, what these TVs are actually doing. With that out of the way, let's, uh, let me put in a real-life content. And we put in a 4K Blu-ray of uh, 
Batman vs Superman again. Okay, I've paused it at this frame here where Ben Affleck is being woken up by... Well, he was in a dream and he was woken up. Uh, in any case, what we are focusing on is, are the details in, the, in his white shirt and also the lightning bolt in the background. If you pay attention to the Panasonic EZ1002 and also the LG C7, you can see that they are maintaining the creases and the seams in the white shirt quite well. The LG C7 looks darker and the Panasonic EZ1002 looks brighter. I'll explain why. Whereas the the Sony A1 is basically blowing out the detail. Even the lightning bolts in the background is being blown out, whereas it's still visible on the LG C7 and the Panasonic EZ1002. And the reason why these differences exist is because of a different tone mapping algorithm. So there is a standard called the PQ EOTF standard within HDR10 format. PQ EOTF stands for Perceptual Quantization. EOTF stands for Electro Optical Transfer Function. So that dictates the, how the screen should output the luminance level that is coded within the source. And it is an absolute measurement. So if it is 100 nits in theory, the, the screen should be able to actually output it as 100 nits. Now, to follow this PQ EOTF curve as closely as possible means that you are actually seeing the brightness at that level. Because these displays are not capable of a thousand nits, let alone four thousand nits, some tone mapping has to happen. And there are three, we are seeing basically three different tone mapping approaches here. The first one is what is being done by the Sony OLED. Again, there is a way to actually improve it by through the user menu settings, but I'm just using this as an example, using the Cinema Pro mode as an example to illustrate my point. So this tone mapping approach basically follows the PQ EOTF curve as closely as possible and then when it exceeds 800 nits it'll just roll it it'll just clip it off it become plateaus so no more detail are visible on the LG C7 what they are actually doing is they are trying to maintain the highlight detail that is at 4000 nits but in doing so it has to lower the entire curve all the way up to 4000 so even 100 nits may look darker so let's say they may look like 80 nits or maybe not as low as 80 but but you get the point uh, so so the whole luminance range is generally darker and that's the reason why LG OLEDs can look darker than the Sony A1 Bravia even though it has higher peak brightness because the TV is trying to tone map and preserve all the highlight detail above 800 nits running all the way up to 4000 nits so it's lowering the overall APL as a result. Panasonic's tone mapping approach is actually another one. Is an, is, so what this approach is actually doing is to follow the PQ EOTF curve as tightly as possible, let's say until 100 or 200 nits. And only after that, it actually slowly rolls off and then try and preserve as much highlight detail as possible. So you get a very good APL that is close to the reference standard let's say to about 100 or 200 nits and then you roll off the the top end so that they will look darker but because those are not as common as let's say from 0 to 100 nits APL in your normal 4K Blu-ray it's able to maintain a brighter picture than the than the LG C7 so what are the pros and cons of each tone mapping approach with the Sony A1, with the first tone mapping approach where you actually just follow the EOTF curve all the way and then just clips at the top and just discard whatever detail that exceeds the native peak brightness of the display, what you're doing is that you're actually getting the brightest APL possible that is close to the reference standard, but you're going to lose out on highlight detail. The highlight detail will be missing in terms of the creases in the white shirt, the seams and the lightning bolt in the background. The pros and cons with the second approach as what is actually being done by the LG C7 is that you are preserving all the highlight detail all the way up to 4000 nits but you are lowering the APL or average picture level. The third approach by Panasonic which we really like by the way and it is actually the same approach that is being done by Samsung last year 
and also uh, Lerva, the Lerva OLED that I've reviewed recently, they are actually using this approach where they are actually just trying to track the PQ EOTF curve as tightly as possible and then rolling off at the top end so that the general APL will look as close to reference as possible but it is only the top end that the brightness drops but it is actually still depicting all the specular highlight detail quite clearly. Normally with this approach, with uh, this third approach, there tends to be some posterization and color striping that is actually introduced within say a 1000 nit graded content. We've seen posterization on the Samsung 2016 SUHD and the 2017 QLED. We've seen posterization on the Lerva OLED as well, which is more than all these three displays. To Panasonic's credit, they managed to actually implement this method without actually introducing as much posterization that I thought it would actually be. Uh, the amount of posterization, let's say if you look at the sky in the Martian, or the Revenant, both these which are graded to a thousand nits. The, the amount of posterization after we I compare side by side, these two are about equal and the Sony is just superior in terms of the gradation. Even without the smooth gradation control enabled, they generally have the highest bit mapping and the lowest amount of posterization in these smooth gradients. Enabling smooth gradation will just really take this to the next level. It is something, it is a technology that is truly unique to Sony. No other TVs can touch the Sony in terms of presenting a smooth image that is free of posterization. Obviously it depends on how good the source is, but generally the Sony will outperform any other brand of televisions uh, on the market. So here we have three different tone mapping approaches. Who is right and who is wrong? There are no standards for tone mapping anyway, no established standards, so we can't really say who is right and who is wrong. Each method has their own pros and cons. As video enthusiasts who value accuracy above everything else, uh, I think we would generally prefer the approach of either the LG or the Panasonic because the Sony is throwing out some detail, some detail are going to be missing with their approach. Maybe that's why Sony is uh, banking on Dolby Vision support who is actually coming later on this year through a firmware update. I hope you found this video useful. I just wanted to explain why is it that the LG C7 OLED can look less bright than the Sony A1 OLED despite a higher peak brightness. It is entirely because of different tone mapping approaches that is adopted by each company. Now, if you found this video useful, I would appreciate you smash the like button. And if you are not a subscriber yet, you know, please subscribe for more valuable content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.